Hello friends, today we are going to discuss polymorphism and method overloading. Polymorphism is one of the object-oriented programming feature that allows us to perform a single action in different ways. The word poly means many and morphs means forms, so it means many forms. For example, water can have different forms like solid, liquid and gas. Another example is a person at the same time can have different characteristics like a man at a time can be a father, a husband or an employee. In the same way, the same entity, it can be method, operator or object behaves differently in different scenario. There are two types of polymorphism in Java, compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism also known as static polymorphism and it can be achieved using method overloading. Runtime polymorphism also known as dynamic polymorphism and it can be achieved using method overriding. So here method overloading is used to achieve compile time polymorphism and method overriding is used to achieve runtime polymorphism. Now we'll see a brief comparison between method overloading and method overriding. Method overload in method overloading, we can have multiple methods with the same name in the same class, but with different arguments. In method overriding, we can have multiple methods with the same name in different class, but with the same arguments. Now we'll see method overloading in detail we know that a method is a collection of statements that are grouped together to perform an operation a method definition consists of a method header and a method body so here you can see this is method header and this is method body so method header con contains modifier return value type method name and list of parameters so here if we see example public static these are the modifier then int is a return value type here we can have int double float or if method is not returning anything we can have a void method name and then method parameters so parameter list two parameters int num1 int num2 and this is method body now this method name and this parameter are known as method signature so we can implement method overloading by changing this method signature so the method name is going to be same for all methods so we can change the parameters so we can change these parameters in three ways one way is to change the number of parameters so in one method we can have one parameter in second method we can have two parameter or three parameter Second way is by changing the data types of parameter. So if we are going to have same number of parameters, then we can change the data types of parameter. Third way is by changing the sequence of data types of parameter. If we have to keep the same number of parameter and the same data type of the parameter, then we can change the sequence of data types of parameter in different methods. Now we'll see one example here. So in this example, this is a method test which takes no parameter and it just prints this this is a method body it prints no parameter this is a second method with the same name but it takes one integer parameter and it prints the value of this integer parameter so this is a method body of this is a second method then one more method with the same name but it takes two integer parameter here you see the number of parameters are changed in this no parameter here one parameter and here two parameter and it prints the value of a and b then a one more method here with the same name but it takes a double parameter here you can see the type of the parameter is changed one this is also taking one parameter this is also taking one parameter but here the type of data type is different here this takes integer parameter this takes double parameter and this is method body of this method now in this class where we write main function we have created an object of this class and using this object we will call different versions of this test method so when we are just calling this method without any parameter then this method will be called and this part will be executed 
second time when we are passing one integer parameter then this method will be called and the value of a will be printed then third time we are passing two integer parameter it means this method will be called which accepts two integer parameters and the value of a and b will be printed here third fourth time we are passing one parameter which is of type double so this method will be called and this method this body will be executed and this will be the output of this particular program so here we can say we have implemented method overloading we are having four different methods with the same name but with different parameters different types of parameters or different sequence of parameters so this this is way how we can implement method overloading now we'll see example for each type like if we change different number of parameters in the parameter list so here in this method this takes one parameter and the same method name but it takes two parameters so here we have changed the number of parameter which are given in particular method so first method takes only one parameter and second method takes two parameters so this is first example by changing the different number of parameter in the argument list so when we are calling this method when we are passing only one character parameter then this method will be called and when we are passing one character and one integer parameter then this method will be called now we'll see second example by changing different data types of parameter in the parameter list so here we are having two methods two uh, two methods with the same name but with the different data types so both the methods take one parameter so this method takes one parameter this method also takes one parameter but this method take character parameter and this method takes integer parameter so here the number of parameters for both the methods are same but we have changed the data type of the parameter and when we pass a character parameter then this method is called and when we pass integer parameter then this method is called in third example we have changed the sequence of data types of parameters so here in this method we are passing two parameters in the second method also we are passing two parameters in this we are passing one character parameter and one integer parameter in the second method also we are passing one integer parameter and one character parameter but we have changed the sequence here first we are passing character parameter and then integer parameter in the second method first we are passing integer parameter and then we are passing character parameter so here the number of parameters are same the data type of the parameter also same but we have changed the sequence in which these parameters are used so when we call this method and when we pass one character and one integer parameter first character and then integer parameter then this method will be called and when we pass integer parameter first and then character parameter then this method will be called so these are three different ways by which we can implement method overloading this will be the output of this program now we'll discuss few important questions which are asked in the interview first question is about type promotion about type promotion one type is promoted to another implicitly if no matching data type is found so here in this example you can see character can be promoted to integer float byte can be promoted to short int int can be promoted to float long double so we'll see one example what is the need of this type promotion in this example here this first method takes no parameter test method second method takes two integer parameters and it prints the value of both parameter third method takes one double parameter and it prints the value of that double parameter then in the 
class where we have main function we have created an object of this class and using this object we will call different methods so i have taken one integer variable and i have stored this 88 value into this i now using this object i'm calling this test method so when i'm passing no parameter then this method is called and this particular part of the this part of the code will be executed when I'm passing two integer parameter, then this method is called and value of a and b will be printed. Here in this, I'm passing one integer parameter. So here I have only three definitions of the method and no definition takes one integer parameter. So here there is one definition which takes one parameter, but it takes a double parameter. So automatically this integer will be promoted to double and this method definition will be called. This method will be called. And here when we are passing, I'm passing a double parameter here, then also this method will be called because it accepts double parameter. But when I'm passing here integer value and there is no method which takes accepts one integer parameter, then automatically this integer is promoted to double and this method definition will be called. And this will be the output of this particular program. So this is the advantage of method uh, automatic uh, type conversion so one type is promoted to another implicitly if no matching data type is found sometimes it can cause to it can lead to ambiguity also so here in this program we can see it takes two parameter one integer and another long and this second definition takes one long parameter and another integer parameter so when we are trying to pass two values see now here this is this is going to cause ambiguity because now here this 20 is given as an integer now this 20 can be promoted as a long same way here, this 20 can be promoted for long and this 20 can be given as here. So when we are giving these two values, now compiler will be confused which method should be called, which method should be called. So this is going to give us compile time error. So because of this ambiguity, we'll get compile time error. Then we'll discuss a few valid and invalid cases of method overloading. The first case is, these are two methods. First method takes two integer parameter and one float parameter. And second method also takes two integer parameter and one float parameter. Definitely, this is not a valid case of method overloading. And this is going to give us compile time error. In the second case, two methods take two integer parameter first method takes two integer parameter second method takes two float parameter so definitely this is a valid case of method overloading in third case first method takes two integer parameter and second method takes one integer parameter so here we have changed the number of parameters so definitely this is a valid case now here in fourth case we are passing two integer parameter in the first method and the second time also we are passing two integer parameter but we have changed the return type of this method so first method return type is integer the second method return type is float but this is not valid this is going to give us a compile time error because we are having same number of parameters same type of the parameter and the same sequence Method overloading is not possible by changing return type of the method. So here we have changed the return type only. So this is not valid. We'll see one example for this. Here in this, these are two methods. These are two methods. This first method takes two integer parameter and return the addition of those two parameters. Second method also takes two integer parameters and subtract those parameters and return the subtraction of that difference of those two parameters. 
but return type of this method is double and return type of this method is integer but this is not going to make any difference method overloading is not possible by changing the return type of the method this program is going to give us compile time error because we are passing two parameters both integer parameter in the same methods so it is not possible to implement method overloading just by changing the return type of method the next question is can we overload constructor yes we can overload constructor also here we are going to see one example this class box it has three variables width height and depth the first constructor first definition of the constructor takes three parameters w h and t and the values received is assigned to width height and depth second definition takes no parameter and width height and depth are set to minus 1 third definition takes one parameter so if our box is a cube so then your width height and length are going to be same so this definition takes only one parameter and then there is one there is one method which calculates the volume and returns now when in the main function we are calling this constructor so we have to create object of this class by using various constructor so in the this first object we have created and we are passing three integer parameter so definitely then this constructor is called and thus this width height and depth is set to 10 20 and 15 respectively second time we have created another object and we are calling this constructor without any parameter so this this time this width height and depth will be set to minus 1 third time we have created one more object and we are passing one parameter so then this definition will be called and width height and depth will be set to 7 and then using these objects we can call this volume method and print the value of those volume here so this volume method is going to return the volume of the box uh, 10 into 20 into 15 this second time this volume will be minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 third time this volume will be 7 into 7 into 7 so this is how we can overload constructor also now next question is can we overload main method yes we can do we can have multiple definitions for the main method so here we'll see example this is one main method without any parameter it doesn't take any parameter and it just prints this statement second definition in the main it takes integer parameter and it prints this method this message and the parameter it has received now then this is third definition it takes string a string argument this is a standard default uh, method definition of the main and when we execute this program then jvm starts execution with this public static void main string args so by default this method only called if you want to call these methods these main method then we have to create an object of this class and then using that object we can call this method by default jvm is going to call this main method only which takes string arguments so here we have created an object of this class and using this object we are calling this main method without any parameter and then we are passing one parameter and we are calling this method which takes one integer parameter so when this program will be executed this will be the output so first in by default jvm is going to call this main method inside this main method we have created an object of this class and using that object we are calling this main method without any parameter then we are calling this main method with one parameter that's all about uh, method overloading thank you so much